All right, hello everyone, and welcome to another cast, another game. If you're watching this on YouTube, hello. I obviously it's a video. I'm recording this. Don't know what else to say. If you're watching this on Twitch, thanks for watching in. Uh, watching, thanks for tuning in. Uh, don't forget to hit go to the actual video when it is posted live. Give it a thumbs up. Give it a like. Give it a view as um, well. Every little view, every little bit of sponsorship does definitely help me um, well, pay my internet bills. Crota Live. All right. Let's go ahead and break things down here on the top left-hand side of the map. This is Terranistan. We have Fly. Over here on the bottom right-hand side of the map, we have Life spawning as the Red Night Elf. Night Elf versus Orc in this 1v1 matchup. And I am expecting your typical Druids of the Talon going up against Blade Master's Spirit Walkers. And we'll see how all of that does really unfold in this one particular matchup. Ancient of War already probably training up an archer here ready to go. Undead has a lot of things going for them. It doesn't have as much of a hero carry as Orc or Night Elf, but can move around map very quickly with heroes and has an excellent late game. Very well put. Um, people are arguing like, what is the best race? Um, it, it's, it's very difficult to, to categorize what is a, a best race in any real-time strategy game because your unit compositions, your strategies, your maps, all of those things do play, it, play a factor, play a role. Uh, I mean, if you said, what is the best race in, in Warcraft 3 Frozen Throne, you're like, like, is if if it if if it's just a tournament where everyone plays on Lost Temple, um, I think human has the best chance. Just saying, you know things like that. Like how how possible are fast expansions? Um, if fast expansions are wow, really early out of the gate, speed scroll coming out from the Blade Master. So the Blade Master wants to get to the opposite end of the map and in a hurry, um, using a bit of gold to buy himself time to try and take down this assassin. We'll see if it was absolutely necessary or not. Assassin will get taken down. What item is he going to go ahead and pick up here? Um, is he looking for a Gloves of Haste, Circlet of Nobility? Claws of Attack plus 6. Yes, he was looking for that. He got the item that he was looking for. No Jedi Mind Tricks there. Blade Master is still running around. Has taken a little bit more damage than he would like, but that's what the Healing Salve is for. He's able to run out there, um, deal some damage, and then make a quick run back in. Meanwhile, Grunt, good Smicro spotting across here. Fly realizing, hey... Life is already knocking at my front door as the Demon Hunter is going to go ahead and... Oh, that peon was was supposed to try to get into position and stop this. Instead, well, the Demon Hunter runs straight on in and is going to be able to take down an Orc Burrow. That is, well, absolutely, absolutely devastating to an Orc player because Orc Burrows are, well, the farms of the orc army now you can see that there is one lone archer back across here the demon hunter could try to make its way back in the grunt could actually just try and stand down across over here but the archer would just be able to slowly slowly start pelting it down meanwhile blade master is at the other end of the map and takes down a moonwell as well and look at this there is only 20 or 30 supply at the other end of the map Meanwhile, Demon Hunter is going to go ahead and try and make a quick play to try and take down this Orc Burrow. Orc Burrow down to 50, some odd hit points, 20. There's the cancellation once more as the Demon Hunter just running back again. Staff of Teleportation, Blade Master needs to rejoin in on this fight. Healing Salve onto the Grunt as the Blade Master could go after the Archer. There it goes. Archer is, in fact, taken down as the Grunt um, needs to somehow double back around and try and save himself. Grunt already down to 282 hit points. That Demon Hunter, all he really wants is a good slice out of that Grunt, dealing a little bit of damage and preventing any serious healing. Demon Hunter at 2, Blade Master at 1. Good items on the Blade Master, though. As you see, that Grunt is just going to head back over and try to heal back up. It is going to be slight delay on the 
um, Torin Chieftain, or we might even see the Shadow Hunter here. We're not 100% sure what we're going to be looking at. Blade Master getting some damage onto the Demon Hunter once more. Demon Hunter just trying to be as annoying as possible. Going to rush on in here, but it won't be able to take down any of these Orc Burrows. The, the Demon Hunter may have miscalculated, and well, that Grunt could not have gotten to there in time. If he had, if he had done so, the Demon Hunter might have been trapped inside just a bit right before the Blade Master sells that um, excuse me, that uh, Cloak of Shadows. All right, temporarily forgetting my item names. Blade Master gets a Wind Walk Strike onto the Demon Hunter, now going after some archers. There's a Mana Burn. Blade Master heading back off to the north here. Quill Beast are looking to do a lot more damage as the Grunt still circling back around, un unsure of where to go. Let's come back across here. Beastiary under construction. So is a Spirit Lodge. That is going to be a problem as those are all both exposed buildings. And the Quill Beast with that piercing damage um, is going gonna, is gonna to be able to deal a lot of damage there. A second Quill Beast as well. Let's see, are they going to end up getting finished off? One Quill Beast down. Demon Hunter in a serious bit of trouble. Down to 127 hit points. Is it going to get win? Nope, no critical strike possible. And to add a little bit more of an insult, there was a miss in that final attack. All right. Quill B still poking its head around right there. Second hero has not yet been added or even started at this point as there is a lumber issue in terms of training. All right, there is that spirit lodge once more. And uh, what is happening back at home? Dual Ancients of Wind with a tech to Tree of Eternity. It looks as though the Druids of the Talon are going to be in a good position following up that initial heavy heavy harass is life going to be able to finish off and and deal a killing blow that is the question there was a serious setback in terms of overall just tech Torin chieftain getting started at the six minute 40 second mark first raider at 640 as well spirit lodge not even done at the seven minute mark Meanwhile, let's take a look at this. The Beastmaster and the Demon Hunter, both of them are actually doing a bit of creeping right now. And what is interesting to note is that even though the Demon Hunter and the Beastmaster or the Demon Hunter did a lot of harassment, he, in terms of level, it's really not that bad. It's level 2 Demon Hunter versus a level 1, now level 2 Blade Master, who when he just got that ability. Forest Troll Berserker adding in some extra, well, damage into the group as well. Uh, wow, big bit of damage there. That one grunt down to 50, 84 hit points. Will get taken down. Potion of Greater Healing, exactly the item he was looking for. But he ignores the Tome of Strength because, well, you need agility, right? It's all about agility. Raider now coming across here. Torrent Chieftain is added. Um, fairy Fire onto the Raider. That negative 4 armor may cause a little bit of problems. I do not believe Pillage has been researched. No, it has not, as the Torrent Chieftain still wandering around. Beastmaster and the Demon Hunter. Level 2, level 1 versus a level 2, level 1. And the Beastmaster is almost at level 2. And we're going to be looking at the Blade Master coming across here in just a moment. Now, there are Wisp all across the map. So it shouldn't come as a, a surprise if there are some units here. Raiders coming across here. A bit more repairing, getting underway. Blade Master trying to finish off an Archer. There is a Mana Burn there. Blade Master looks as though it will finish off the Archer as the Demon Hunter tries to get away once more. Raiders. Well, the Raiders are now finally backing off. Good bit of harassment there. Oh, wow. The Ancient of War almost got a hit onto that one Raider, which could have possibly taken it down. All right. So far, very strong. But and the issue is, I guess there was so much focus on Micro that the Druid of the Talon still unable to or do not have that mastery training yet no cyclones and even if he does have cyclone he doesn't have a critical mass of units at all all right i thought i saw an ensnare there but the staff of preservation got it in time nicely played nicely done as we are up to five druids of the talon and we should be looking at a critical mass of mana in in just a little bit back off to the north blade master taking a little bit of damage as the Demon Hunter and the Beastmaster may both level at this fairly difficult creep camp. Beastmaster now done. Demon Hunter should be able to finish off as well. What is this Renegade Wizard going? Uh, that Renegade Wizard chasing a unit a bit too far. And now finally coming back in only to get destroyed. Demon Hunter at level 3. All right, where is that Ancient of War going now? As the Torin Chieftain off to the north at the opposite end. Endurance Aura and now with Shockwave. 
item, Sobi Mass, onto that Torrent Chieftain. Blade Master healing things back up once again, only plus eight attack. We'll see if any additional items can be added here. Big issue as well, Mud Golems are immune to magic, so only the Beast Master and, and well, only the Beastmaster and the Quill Beast right now can actually deal damage to those other units. Beastmaster is in there absorbing a lot of damage. Meanwhile, Demon Hunter going to be heading back off to the north. He was staffed a preservation, picked up an Orb of Venom, but also without the uh, without the True Shot or not dealing as much damage. All right, Blade Master is now revealed, taking a lot of damage there. There's a Cyclone as the Beastmaster finishes off. Get to level three. We'll have level two Quill Beast. No Fairy Fire, however. That comes as a big surprise, as there should be a good amount of units in here in just a second. Taking a look at the population count. Life seems to be in the driver's seat, even though he is down on supply just a little bit. Torrent Chieftain here, ready to go. You see a single hawk overhead. He's going to get ensnared and, well, will just disappear. Torrent Chieftain does have Shockwave, and that may become a problem. As well, as we know, Shockwave does eat through this back line very, very quickly. Beastmaster has a scroll of the beast. We may see him sell that for a scroll of healing as we are looking at the pocket factory all in position right here. Spirit Link also being added as well. There is a couple of quill beasts. Beastmaster in that front line. Raider is going to be able to escape. Shockwave dealing a good amount of damage right there. Grunt down to 200, well, 222 hit points in just a matter of seconds. Fairy Fire with ranged damage from the Druid of the Talents is no joke as more and more attacks now coming through. All right, Disen or Disenchant right there. Blade Master, Potion of Invulnerability. Demon Hunter in a little bit of trouble. Squirrel Town Portal transfer to the Goblin Tinker. Are they going to be able to get any fleeing units? No, they are not. 104 damage critical strike. Not enough to finish off a unit at all as we are currently looking at 48 to 58. Fly doing a great job bouncing back. He currently has the supply advantage, and that does come as a shock to me. Meanwhile, level 3 on the Demon Hunter, level 3 on the Beastmaster, level 1 on the Goblin Tinker. Meanwhile, level 3, level 3 on the Torrent Chieftain and Blade Master. Sobe Mass on the Torrent Chieftain now also with the Clarity Potion means that we are going to have a lot of mana. And are we going to start to see some Scrolls of Healing? Without those Scrolls of Healing, you cannot negate the, a, a well-hit Shockwave. And that does end up becoming a problem. Blade Master up to plus 13 attack now. Double circlets of nobility with the claws of attack plus 6. And now the slippers of agility. That will definitely all help out. Torrent Chieftain is the one. Perhaps he's been buying and, and buying and depleting the scrolls of healing so that his opponent cannot purchase them. If that is the case, that is absolutely brilliant use. Or it could just be the fact that, hey, you know what? With Spirit Link, Scrolls of Healing, healing even those peons that absorb damage is absolutely beautiful. All right, in comes this next attack. Druids of the Talon. I, it, I believe Life thinks that he has an, an advantageous position. Fairy Dragon up in the air as well. Mana Burn finishes off that one Spirit Walker there. Big, big damage. Meanwhile, the Beast here, you're going to get focused down. 48 supply compared to 55. The Blade Master is right there. What is going on? Cyclone. There you have it. Fairy Dragon Torrent Chieftain is just up in the air. No easy way to get those units back down as the Disenchants would cause the Fairy Dragons to Mana Flare back. Potion of Invulnerability now being used. Torrent Chieftain going to try and get into position. Perhaps a Shockwave would be useful. Um, is it going to end up happening? That is the big question there. No shockwave that I've seen, and the Torrent Chieftain should get mana burned here in just a moment. Staff of Preservation saves the Goblin Tinker. Squirrel of Healing, a bit, uh, well, able to stay alive a little bit longer, and this is now just all turning into a war of attrition. Torrent Chieftain does not have a potion of mana. How can he actually outlast in this one particular fight as you see a big disenchant dropping back down a whole bunch more units? All right, the units are all still fighting together here. Torrent Chieftain could turn around and at least start focusing down some of these lower hit point units. There goes some more Druids of the Talon. Forest Troll Berserker trying to get away, unable to do so. Quill Beast just chasing after him. 46 supply compared to 37. The Orc is now just losing a lot more as there goes another Shockwave. Again, not finishing off any of those Druids of the Talon, those in the back line. Torrent Chieftain, a little bit low on mana once again. Peon's now trying to pull back. It looks as though this is going to be some easy, easy finish here as the Blade Master gets to level 4. Potion of Invulnerable, or no, not Invulnerable. 
it, well, is invulnerable because of Cyclone, not a potion of invulnerability. Going to turn back around, try to attack his way out of this box. Is he going to be able to do it? Blademaster in serious trouble. Does have a potion of healing. Uses it. Is he going to be able to finish off the Blademaster? No, he is not. Cyclone now picks up the other side. Forest Troll Berserker is trying to finish off some more of those units. Raiders are still in the air. Peon going to be joining back in. Blademaster joins back in on the fight as the Forest Troll Berserker gets taken down. Some more Cyclone being brought over. Spirit Walkers now joining in. Are we going to see a Spirit Link? Spirit Link on, across multiple heroes is going to be very helpful as now the, well, the units are now taken down again. 45 compared to 34. The Blade Master, however, is still a serious, serious threat as the Torrent Chieftain, down to 144 hit points, needs to back off. Goblin Tinker finally gets to level 2. Peon's doing a walk of shame in between the gold mine here and is just going to be giving free experience. Not quite sure why it would do that at all as the Blade Master heads back off to the north to perhaps pick up some useful items. All right, Scroll of the Beast perhaps was sold. Potion of Invulnerability was purchased as well. There is a, um, what, the Thunderhawk is now in the air, causing a bit of damage. Blade Master going to go ahead and try and engage. There you go, going after those units. As you see, Potion of Invulnerability should be used, and it is used in time. Seven seconds before that, Blade Master needs to get the heck out of a very bad spot. And it looks as though he's going to get out of there just in time now. Cyclone, however, picks himself back up. Torrent Chieftain in a very, very strange pos position as the Blade Master uses a potion of healing in time again. All right, let's take a look. Beast Master gets taken down. Blade Master now trying to run away. Where is he going to run off to? Is he going to be able to get anywhere ser anywhere for uh, seriously? Torrent Chieftain now down to 200 hit points. He's going to get focused down here in just a moment. Blade Master trying to finish off some more units. Torrent Chieftain at two, 210. Blade Master could get taken down. Blade Master gets taken down. Goblin Tinker now at level 3. Torrent Chieftain sitting at level 4. And it looks as though the Torrent Chieftain is going to end up getting surrounded with no stomp, no abilities. He gets taken down. And that should be the game. Life taking down Fly here on Terranist Stand. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Hope you guys enjoyed it.